one is better, the EXO Photo Left 8 or Topaz Photo AI with the newest update available for noise reduction? First of all, we're going to take a look at it and I'm going to, to be fair, I'm going to use all the automatic version, uh, automatic uh, noise reduction without any manipulation specifically um, in order to see the first result. Of course, you know, both can give you a similar result if you can um, do some extra editing and manual manipulation. But the objective is to make sure that what to, what they do in terms of um, noise reduction, in terms of automatic, in without any effort. And the second thing is that is the DxO Photo Lab 8, which is the newest, just came out. Um, those who have the older version of DxO Photo Lab 7 or the Topaz Photo AI is, or is still thinking about deciding which one is better in terms of the buy. Just um, right off the bat, two things different about the DxO Photo Lab and uh, Topaz Photo AI. So DxO Photo Lab is a full-fledged um, photo editing software like Lightroom or Capture One AI. You can do everything you want necessary in order to edit your image, uh, including the state-of-the-art noise reduction, obviously, and uh, the lens correction. Let me be precise about those particular things that they are known for from the very beginning. Topaz is very known for uh, their sharpening tools and uh, noise reduction tools as well, which is as good, if I, I dare to say, as a DxO. However, DxO for DxO, sorry, Topaz for AI. So Topaz for AI is also works as a plugin. Number one, so we can work with. Uh, photo lab, oh, sorry, um, Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop or Affinity Photo or any software that accept, um, Photoshop plugin. But it's not really a well fledged, um, editing software like DxO. DxO, you have all the tools necessary to just literally do everything. Take Topaz AI as like your, um, photo recovery tool. Let's say it's too noisy. It does a fantastic noise reduction. It's not too sharp enough. It does uh, sharpening for you. Photo is blur. It can recover details from a blurred image or out of focus. So it has a specific tool for recover your image if necessary. And it has one of the best state of the art upscaling tool in the market. So they both different in terms of the utilization. It's similar in terms of uh, sharpening and uh, noise reduction. So uh, those are the difference. So we're not going to talk about that. Uh, you can actually have both if you want to. But uh, uh, in my opinion, if you have DxO, um, you don't necessarily have to have a photo AI in order to do noise reduction and sharpening because they are both equally good in my opinion. But we're going to see it now. Don't worry about it. However, if you are looking for upscaling or you already have uh, Topaz Photo AI, then I don't think you need the DxO because, you know, your other software, whatever software, even free ones, uh, just works fine as long as you use uh, Topaz Photo AI for your noise reduction and sharpening. Then you can practically use any other software on the, on the other side. So in summarize, the DxO is a one-stop shop we can do everything in the one. Uh, photo lab, you have to probably do back and forth, but if you don't do um, um, a lot of photograph, uh, photo, photography at once, say 200 photos per shot, then it's useful. Otherwise, go for DxO. Now, let's see, um, uh, compare the similarities that they have uh, side by side. Um, let's start with the same image I have opened back and forth. You can see that the moment that I opened in the photo AI, the same image that I'm, I have open in uh, photo lab, it already did some noise reduction. So I'm going to see. So because it's, I directly opened it in the photo AI, the raw image is automatically did noise reduction and I'm not going to touch. What I'm going to touch though, however, just to be fair, is that I'm going to do uh, automatic sharpening. It says the subject. It says that the subject is um, my apple and some books in the background. If I remember, some books in the background. There you go. Or I can actually edit selection and then um, do all if I want to. But do I need to do all? I'm not sure. But, uh, but, but, but probably I'll do all. Uh, 
or I can paint on um, paint on this area. The reason why I'm doing that because in DxO it will do sharpening basically all of it. That includes this uh, wood right there. Um, I want to have some sort of similarities. You know, just to save time for this video, I could just you know uh, don't worry about it and you know do the global sharpening. But I don't need everything to be sharpened. Just the one that in focus. That's all I want. Right, so that's all. And I'm going to just uh, export it without touching. So the noise reduction, it did raw strong. And everything else in automatic. I didn't do any minor de-blur. Uh, it did automatically. Remove large grain. It did automatically. That's it. So I'm going to do export. And uh, in the desktop. So that, you know... Uh, is done already you don't need to worry about it too much by the way while it's exporting i invite you to go down in my description below and uh, to, to 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 try out the software by yourself by cl uh, clicking in the link in the description uh, it helped me if you buy it uh, using my link uh, but it won't cost you extra money right you can see the size of the image is um, size from 19.7 megabyte to became 7. Uh, 8.7 megabyte in the jpeg 100% quality uh, the full version of it so i'm going to close the close the window close the software and here you go we are in dxo uh, there's a new tool in the dxo which is that finally you can do a live change with the new loop tool which is fantastic finally i've been waiting for it forever so i'm going to show you we're going to exercise it but other than that i have to make sure that the smart lighting is on automatically the clear view plus uh, i think in the photo ai it did some sort of uh, automatic correction i'm not sure uh just to be fair in that case i'm going to turn on clear view plus and then i will go to the noise reduction and there i'm going to use the turn on and click auto so it did i'm not sure if it did auto or not Uh, I'm not sure, so I'm going to click Deep Prime XD, and in order to see the change, I'm going to click the Loop Tool and bring on the Apple. Do you like Apple? And we're going to wait for the result in very moment. But meanwhile, I'm going to turn on the less lens softness correction because in the other side, I did use the automatic sharpening and the unsharp mask. That's it. I'm not going to touch anything else. I'm not going to touch any uh, color. I think the I'm going to turn, even turn this off because I don't think it's necessary. and raw white balance i'm not sure i personally sincerely not sure but it did turn on the tint plus three so i'm going to go back to zero i'm not going to do much and then i will wait for the result to come out or actually you know what uh, it takes some time because it's using the computer like no tomorrow so um, do i wait oh there you go finally it's showing the result it's showing the result finally so that's the deep prime xd xd2s or you have the deep prime i'm not sure it's going to show the result immediately it does show it does have a little bit of grain so i'm going to skip to the deep prime um just to give you a context this image is um where is it i'm going to show you the metadata take a look on the side on the on this side on the right hand side it's a micro four third the uh, Olympus EM5 Mark One, very first one, to be honest, one of the oldest camera in the market, MFT, at the ISO 
12,000 uh, 12, K. Hang on a second. That's a 12,000 one. So I'm doing a wrong image. I'm going to go to the 25,600. The most, um, you know, nasty version of the of, of, of this image, which is, uh, you know, micro four third. On top of that, it is uh, quite sincerely uh, dark. So I'm going to turn on the clear view plus and um, probably minus one in the tint. Noise reduction on. I'm going to turn on the loop. And uh, while it's, um, while it's, uh, yeah, there you go. It did. Take a look at it. It's fantastic. So I'm going to go to export, export to disk. I think I'm going to export the um, standard output. So standard output would be what? Standard output would be full quality exported JPEG, DXO original, 300 PPI. Mm. I am not sure if I can change the pixel. Because at the JPEG for tablet, it has a 19200 pixel. In the standard output, you have the full pixel. Probably I'm going to keep it to full pixel. And then export. So it's exporting. It might take, take some time. Considering that it's a massive, massive, massive uh, image. And then we're going to compare side by side. And that will help you to understand whether or not you need um, Topaz PhotoLev AI, which one is better for Topaz PhotoLev AI or DxO PhotoLab 8, the newest one. Uh, it's exporting at the bottom. So while you are waiting, I would invite you to go down in the description below and then download the download the software by yourself and then try it out by yourself to make a good judgment remember that uh, to be fair i did turn on the clear view plus so don't worry about the luminosity as i said it's a full-fledged editing software um just um important is that in terms of the noise reduction and the sharpening quality uh, let's take a look finally we are there and i'm going to open the software now so that's the topaz denoise ai and DxO, so Topaz and DxO, Topaz and DxO, and uh, also the Topaz version gives you almost eight megabyte, more than eight megabyte of the file size, and DxO will give you twenty one megabyte. God damn! Now that's huge, man. Uh, wow, wow, I wasn't expecting that big, honestly. Although they are both equally same, but the DxO give you bigger file size. That's yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, it's mind blowing. Now we're going to compare side by side though. That's the fun part. But note that, that the file size of DxO is much bigger, which means that at hundred percent, DxO might look a bit better. So to be precise, on the left hand side, you have Topaz Dino's AI. On the right hand side, you have the DxO. So I'm going to do a little tour. Maybe I'll do a 50%. It does look a little bit of softer Topaz, but bear in mind that you can manipulate in the sharpening AI version, of course, and that will give you the adequate file size. 
and also the ex output size of uh, DXO is much bigger than the output size of Topaz Denoise AI. Mm. Bam bam bam. The, the in the background the text looks much better, clearer in the DXO. Again, that's they are both in automatic version, and I did change some contrast in the DXO, so that might give you the impression that DXO is much sharper. But to be honest with you, if you already have the Topaz Denoise AI, it's freaking awesome because think about it. I'm going to show you the uh, histogram. Not the histogram, the exit file. Sorry. Take a look at the exit file. Read at the top of both sides. The ISO is 25,600. Guys, this is huge. So considering the nasty, nasty, nasty uh, uh, noise, they both gave pretty good result. Yes, the you see that um, DXO has a little bit of grain, where Topaz is nice and smooth. So, is it a good thing or not a good thing? I'm not sure, but it does give you much more detail. Well, that's my take. I hope that you liked the video. If so, um, like and subscribe, and I see you in future video. Bye bye.